Good morning and welcome to the Beginners Online Trading Webinar. My name is Danny and I will give you the webinar today. Before we begin, as always, hello, Philip. Before we begin, as always, I would like us to go through a quick sound check to make sure that the sound and the visibility of my screen is in a proper level. Please use the question section to comment that the sound is okay and that the screen is visible for you all. Very good, Brandon, Gemma, very good. Very good, so, so I should, I should uh, begin. Okay, so I will, will, I will explain first of all what will happen in the webinar and then we can take off. Initially, we're gonna open with a quick introduction to the company and the services that we can offer. Uh, later on, we're gonna have a nice review about the platform here or the facility and a few features here on the left. Then on the second part, it will be much more practical. We'll speak about sell and buy and some logic behind decisions on this interface as well. Uh, hopefully, if we can make it in time, then the third part will be more into analysis, perhaps some technical analysis. Uh, and that's it. And it's also important to know that any capital markets and trading information disclosed in this webinar is provided for Informative purposes only, it should not be constructed or applied as an investment advice, recommendation, or suggestion. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you that the webinar is recorded. So that means that you, if for instance, you didn't understand something on the first time, obviously you can ask me through the question section. Uh, but otherwise, you can just review it in your uh, own time through our channel on YouTube. Okay, hopefully it will be uploaded today. I can't guarantee anything, but usually that's how things are. I'm just gonna go for a few moments to make sure that the webinar is recorded as I mentioned a minute ago, and then we will begin. So I'll be right back. Thank you very much. Okay, so it seems like everything is okay. I see there is a question here from Philip. I have some questions at the end. So guys, my my what I've explained just now, is that the webinar is live so you can take advantage and ask whatever you want to ask you don't have to wait for me to get to a certain topic although i'm going to leave you space for questions anyway okay but if you want you can just put it down all right so like i said i'm denny this is the beginners online trading uh, webinar and we're going to take off just a second i would like us to get a nice place for the notes okay and i would probably suggest you guys to do the same all right, and as I said, we're gonna open with, a, an, uh, with an introduction. So as you know, uh, we exist in, since 2006, AvaTrade, we are a regulated company. We have nine licenses uh, worldwide. If somebody has a question uh, in need assistance with basically anything, you can find a customer service here at the bottom left. Okay, and now this interface is not something you have to download or install or anything. Okay, you're just gonna com conveniently log in with your email and password, and you're gonna see that. Okay, if it looks a bit different, you can just contact the customer service on their email to avatray.com, and they can apply it on your account, and then you can access on the chat. Otherwise, you can just communicate on the email if you want. There is a question here, Danny, I cannot download MD4. That is, <laughs> with as much as I would wanna help you, uh, Brendan, this is something you must address your senior account manager or the customer service, because I cannot know what the issue is. You'll have to either send us a screenshot or something so we can understand why, why you can't download the platform. Uh, Philip here, how often can I make money transfers? I don't think that there is a limit, but I would just suggest you to put it to the test and just see uh, how smooth that is and then see if there is a limit. I'm not aware of any limit anyway, so just try. Uh, as I said, customer service is accessible via here. And if it doesn't look like that, you can just send them an email straight to cs at avatrade.com, no problem. And on the trading side, we're providing a senior account manager, okay, that can be devoted to your file, assisting you with all kind of trading inquiries. Uh, it doesn't cost, the service doesn't cost any money, but it, it does depend on eligibility. So I, you have to first deposit and then you can check you deserve a senior account manager. Usually they contact 
uh, they contact you automatically. Uh, what else I wanted to say about this interface, just before we carry on, so we can carry on with ease, is that this interface is the desktop version, but you can also enjoy it on the go, right? We have an app called Avago, and you can just download the app, and you're going to enjoy a similar interface with all kind of features that I'm going to show you. Uh, we also have MT4 and MT5. Hello to you, too. That's completely fine. You joined right on time. MT4 and MT5, right? For those who are familiar with, the, with those platforms, I'm going to teach you those platforms now. We also have Ava Social and Ava Options. Both of them are not uh, going to be covered by this webinar, but I'm just going to say something nice about Ava Social. Um, what it does, basically, it's a social media platform. It lets you follow and copy other traders. So as I said, there are two functions. There is follow and there is to copy. The difference is if I'm following someone, what's going to happen is I'm going to get uh, notifications with these positions, and it's up to me if they execute similarly or not. If I'm copy somebody, so that will happen automatically, I'm still going to get the same uh, I'm still going to get the information of, of what it's happening and how it's happening. So later on, I can jot it in my sheets or something, but it will happen automatically. When I'm copying somebody, I don't have to touch anything. Uh, I would make comparison, though, between what's... Oh, there is people here complaining about the sound. Let's check it on my end. But uh, Mr. Abdul Malik... To me, it seems fine. I think maybe it could be on your, oh, you can't, you probably, <laughs> you probably, uh, just a second, all fine. Please check on your end. Yeah, I just realized if he can't hear me, so obviously he can't be hearing what I'm saying. So I just, I hope that uh, my reply is, is visible. Okay, uh, now, I, as I was saying, practically this thing is extremely helpful as a beginner. Right, because as a beginner, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing, how I'm doing, if it will be good or not. So following somebody who does might be extremely helpful. Same apply with a uh, copying somebody. Um, yeah, I don't think we should expand any more comprehensively about that. Okay, you should just download the app and see it in your own eyes. Uh, yeah, let's carry on with ease with the web trader. Okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to cover a future, few features here on the left. Uh, okay, so let's begin with the signal section. Okay, I'm just going to hit here the signal section. I can show you that you can pick it from the outside as well. So this is the default screen, right? Usually it's like this, but it could be also folded down. As you can see here, there is a toggle that I can click uh, and drag up and down. And then it lets me see a bigger part of my screen. Uh, right here, I have this light blue icon that I can click on one of them. Let's go with CAD Japanese Yen. So as you can see, Canadian dollar versus Japanese Yen. What happened when I click on the signal is it just, just a second, it sends me, you see, I clicked on it. It sends me to here. So that means that those are, uh, those are technical analysis inputs predetermined. It's provided by the Trading Central. And it could save me the trouble to find those levels on my own, right? As you can see, there is a cell scenario here. I'm going to expand it by clicking on the two arrows. Uh, there is a, a, a cell scenario. It means that uh, I can take a cell. It means that my intention is that the value will decrease, right? Or I have a buy scenario, and then my intention is that the, uh, the value will increase. Now, it's elaborated here by the levels. It's not mandatory to know what support and resistance are too thoroughly, but it's to understand the idea so you can enjoy the signal. Uh, yeah, so support and resistance. Oh, one more thing. You see that the validity here is daily, and we are looking at, oh, we're actually looking at one month. So we should be able to see that. However, it doesn't look the same. Just a second, I'm going to change it to a day. And that makes much more sense. And then I can simply see there are numbers here. 
levels of resistance. Resistance will always be my higher point, right? So this is a resistance line. You see, I'm just um, I'm just following here the levels that I find right. Yeah, and all those shenanigans I'm putting on the chart are pulled from this list. There's a tiny arrow here. When I'm clicking on it, uh, it, it falls down. Just a second. I'm sorry. Um, please check your volume, perhaps. No, <laughs> I'm I, unfortunately there is no way for me to help this guy with as much as unfortunate that is. Uh, yeah. So this is one of the lines. This is another line, right? Those lines of resistance, and the signal does the same automatically. It throws three uh, three lines, maybe two up and two down, and that's fine. And we also have the price that it was based on, right? When the signal was created, there was a difference that it was based upon. And those things are here automatically. I didn't write it down. I just click here, just click here on the button and it does everything on its own. And according to those levels, resistance will be higher uh, points and support will be lower points, right? lower points of support you can imagine it as if this would have been some kind of a room so this will be my ground this will be minus one minus two it's not exactly like that but i guess it helps you capture what i'm explaining this will probably be my uh, roof this is another floor this is another floor going higher resisting from going up or uh, supporting me from falling down Okay, with this agenda, what happens when I go with the buy scenario? Watch what happens. I'm not doing anything uh, special, just hitting here the buy button and already showing me here uh, potential profit, uh, take profit and stop loss. That means that it's going to mark my take profit somewhere here, right? It's messing around with me, but I guess. There's no such a major major difference, but I'm gonna teach you a nice technique how to put how to put it exactly where you want. See people raising their hands. Danny, can you speak about entries? Uh, Chen, I'm extremely sorry, but I, I actually I will speak about entries, but not now. Let me first pass that segment. It's important for me to cover uh, in the introduction just the basic, uh, you know, things for beginners. And then when I carry on with ease, I can speak about entry point, but not now. Okay, but you can remind me in 10 minutes if you want. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, I'm going to teach you a nice technique how to put it in the bullseye. Okay, we're going to take whatever is here and we're going to click Control C. And then I'm going to click on the line and simply can place it down here in the coordinates and click save. And it's right where I want. Same apply with a stop loss. Okay, it's not mandatory. I have to tell you up front, it's not mandatory to do what I do. I just want you to have a visibility for the stop loss and the take profit. Because this is sort of what it, this is going to look like when you're going to take the position, if it's a buy. This one, if it gets to this price, it's that means that we can make $40. If it goes down to that price, we're going to lose potentially $70. This is the ratio that uh, risk reward ratio that not everybody might like. So you can adjust it in your own way. Uh, what else I want to tell you about the signals? You should check the huge benefit on using the signal section and not hear from the outside, right? Is that you can see the time that it was produced. Now you're gonna ask me, Danny, what difference does it make if the signal was produced now or three hours ago? Yeah, can anybody think of a reason why I would wanna pick a signal that was recently made and not a signal from three hours ago? What might be the reason?
recently made it's more accurate well that's a nice guess uh kim it's uh, maybe could be oh there we go who wrote that down to tugba tugba right so tugba wrote here very nicely that um l let me actually show you let me see if i can show you that there we go look what we found guys this is an extra uh, an exact explanation to what was just uh, written in the audience, right? So people wrote here, the market has already reached a key level. So that means that when the computer, when when uh, the signal was produced upon a certain price with certain expectations, it seems like it's already passed. So me taking the signal now could be futile. Yeah, very simple, very straightforward. Yeah. Uh, yeah, regarding the signals, before we carry on, anybody else? wants to ask about the signal section or the way that it can be it can be used any questions at all what about the load size uh kim if you can elaborate what about the load size i'm not sure that i'm following tugba what is the success rate only god knows <laughs> only god knows tugba i would never know I just explained that there is a certain importance to how the the signal is, uh, you know, is used. The way that you, oh, I understand. I understand you, Kim. So what about the lot size? You you were asking if the if the signal helps you to determine the lot size. Uh, no, unfortunately, it's not. Okay, uh, basically, it's something you you have to do on your own. Let let, let me show you. So let's take corn just as an example. I'm gonna hit the cell this time. Um, as you can see, the lot size here is not defined by the signal. It's not. I think that this is the lot size I have in the system, but I can change it. I can change it to 0.01. I can change it to one lot. I can change it to whatever I want. But unfortunately, no, Kim. It doesn't. The signal is not. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't give you the lot size. Just the default of what you have in the system. So you can adjust it. Yes, guys, is there anything else? Let's carry on, carry on with ease. We do have some more things to review. This one, okay, so we said that signals is technical analysis, right? What's underneath where it says news here is fundamental analysis. We're gonna click that. And then we're gonna see that this is also divided to categories. We have here all Forex, stocks, commodities, indices, and cryptos by clicking on let me see this one, not really. I'm looking for something that sometimes when we click, okay, maybe the top one, you see? If I click on the article, regardless of what's written here, which are a lot of interesting things, uh, here at the bottom where it says two related instruments, if I click it, it's gonna show me as an addition what can be directly related to. So if I'm gonna read that, it might have impact on Australian uh, American dollar, or euro versus dollar. Question here from Steven. In what time frame are signals created? That depends, Steven. I'm just gonna hop back to the signal section just to show you, right? Gonna click here signals and let's go with mm -mm, let's go with Dow Jones. You see that there is the validity down here up here you see validity daily so that depends i don't know which signal you're going to pick but this one is is daily as you can see the levels here are accordingly okay then so as i was i hope that it helps what i've explained right um yeah so as i was explaining this actually indicates what can be uh impacted by that um yeah you Again, this is by the Trading Central. So as I showed, you can just hover between what's more interesting to you and get the pieces of information. Uh, under that, we have the discovery. I'm not gonna show you the whole list. There is no point. You can do it in your own time. Uh, but we're gonna visit the, the economic calendar. Okay, similarly, we have a nice calendar here. You can filter it by its date by the uh the impact if it's high medium more low 
We have here the holidays <clears throat> that can be filtered, the economic events, and here down here we have the flags. Um, there is a nice trick. Let's see if I click here. It's going to show me everything, and also if I do it this way, then I can pick slowly what I want. If I'm following, I don't know the yen. It's going to show me only the only the yen. My network is very bad. Where can I get the signals? Oh, maybe this one. This will be on our YouTube later on. This one I can write down. This poor guy can't hear me still. I hope that this one helped. <clears throat> there is a question here. Okay, clear a signal. Re mm -mm. Okay, able to change it and we get a signal with a shorter time frame. Could be Steven again. I don't know. This is not something that I can uh, comprehensively explain now. Try and again, as I said before, those kind of things is something you must try. Just try and try on your own and do your own research. And there are other webinars. I guess we're doing other webinars regarding to signal devoted to signals. This one is just not. And I still want to show a couple of things. Uh, yeah. So as I said, if I click here on the sig on the um, flag here, it's going to show me only Japan, oh, only Japanese yen, right? Uh, only news about Japan. And if I don't do it, let me just show you. It's showing me everything. Now, <clears throat> if I go down like that, it's going to show me that there are certain things with high impact. So if I don't want to read and we get a signal after the class. I don't know, guys. Really, it's that this thing with the signals is something you have to test on your own. As far as I'm concerned, we don't send signals. But again, I'm, I'm not aware of the changes that is happening each and every day on that section. Uh, I'm an educator. So test it out, see how it goes. That's what I would suggest. Now, as you can see, there are different uh, levels of impact here high, low, and some medium. So for instance, if I don't want to go through the whole thing, I'm not interested in basically whatever is here. Okay, I can just click here on high, and it's going to show me only the important things. Okay, employment rate. We have this Friday, the NFP, right? Just a second, it's not here. Let's go down a bit more. Should be there we go. Okay. Anyway, let's carry on. Let's carry on. As I have explained, this one is very easy. You can see the last result forecast, what we expect to happen, and this will only appear after the occurrence uh, takes place. Uh, by clicking on it, it's going to elaborate exactly how it can be done. You have here the volatility, the impact, price, and so on. You can play with it. Uh, can you show me again the last one? You can do it if you want to filter only US. You can just hit the flag here and it's going to show you only US. There's no need to really, yeah, perfect. Okay, okay, okay. Let's now carry on with these. I think we pretty much concluded the first segment. New section is great. Also, the way, yeah, I'm happy you're enjoying it. Let's carry on and find ourselves a nice asset to analyze are we gonna go with i think when i looked at corn it looked pretty yeah that's not a it's not a picture that we want what about that guy mm-hmm that's that looks much more interesting what about the weeks yeah well, there we go that's interesting. Okay, so let's stick with wheat. I j I'm just going to show you. Uh, there is a question, a new section. Mm -hmm. Could be, could be, could be. This is all possible, guys. I'm not sure when it will happen. As I have explained, Chad, at the beginning, to speak about the entry, 
it's only if we get time. First, we have to make this through this part, and then let's play an else. Okay, from a simple reason that if I want to explain this and I will explain more advanced things, people will just not, I'm not sure that everybody will understand it because this is a beginner's uh, <laughs> webinar anyway, right? Okay, so the way I've picked tweet was manually, but let me just show you for the sake of the discussion how it can be done a little more easily. So this is what I see in the beginning, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here on where it says AUDJPY, simply gonna erase it. And what I'm gonna do is to put down wheat and to pick it from the list. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna do a couple of things that will help you just uh, enjoy this interface to its full extent. Okay, the crosshair that I'm using is not something that I can analyze with uh, and get data from the candles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here. Let's go to the right, let's go one by one. So in here, we changed the symbol. In here, we can change the time frame, right? Either scrolling up and down, on a, or it's gonna show me only two hours, or I can click here on the thin line toggle and drag it down. Uh, next to it, we have the candles, could be bars as well, could be this fancy line, okay. Uh, there is there is certain importancy analyzing with candlesticks, things uh, that you might not find analyzing with the line. Okay, certain levels that you're not gonna see through the line you see this rectangle here and here watch them disappear right yeah we ain't gonna see that with a line but with the bars and with the candles it's here okay right now it's not mandatory to understand fully what they are used for but later on maybe i will explain about uh candle candlesticks formation and we'll see Okay, keep going to the right. You have here the nice crosshair. See from no crosshair to crosshair. And then I do have data from the candles. <clears throat> and then I can see what each candle levels are. Uh, keep going to the right. We have here, I can split two charts. Okay, just make sure when you hit the buy or the sell. So you will change and not accidentally. You see, this is NASDAQ and this is wheat. So I must click it again to change it. Uh, what else I wanna show you about the toolbar? I think this is pretty much it. This one we already saw, right? This one is the indicators. We will play with it in a moment. And in here, the sell and the buy. So I'm gonna click on, I think buy for now. Yeah, it could be buy. Let's say that we are going against the, against the trend, all right? Now, what I'm looking at, <clears throat> when I'm looking at the price here, 544, okay, which is the price. This is the price, by the way, for a single unit. Okay, so let's suppose that I wish to buy against the trend and I want to close it here, okay? Let's get rid of a couple of things here. Put down wheat, okay. And what we're gonna do is, just a second guys, there is a question here by Eduardo. I have so many years with MT4 and MT5, I believe I need to spend a lot of hours in the platform. It's way can be like skin to mm -hmm. look the the innovative things um just a second the innovative things about the platform here is just the accessibility of the things that it's showing you right you guys see that as soon as i click here buy it's showing me things here which we are going to explain but things that I just don't have on MT4 and MT5 as fast as I have here. The value, the margin impact, the leverage, the spread. Okay, we'll understand what they mean. Now, when I'm trading wheat, and I'm thinking that for some reason, because 
it turned around here and it turned around here the last times that it was visiting 543 okay then i have a reason to believe it's going to jump back again now the problem is let's suppose that i'm going to take a buy here the problem is i'm not sure how much money will i make between 543 to 600 now if i'm going to hit here buy can somebody tell me how much money i'll be making not really right can somebody know that nobody can know that okay i can just tell you that if i go like this for every dollar for every unit that i acquire i have here just one unit right i'm gonna make a dollar therefore if i'm gonna go from 543 to 600 i'll be making just a second let's go 600 i'll be making 56 dollars Okay, let's make it sharp and make it green. Now, unfortunately, or not unfortunately, I'll not be satisfied with $56, and I'm not sure I'm satisfied with this price because I'm still not sure if it's going to go here, uh, during what time it's going to get here. So that's a problem. So the thir first thing that I'm going to begin with is a number that I will be satisfied with. Let's suppose that on this position we plan to make, let's say, $700, okay? Now, $700 also needs to be captured with time. So we have the goal and we have the time here that we would like to analyze. Maybe I'm going to make $700 in a, let's say, month, right? Will I be waiting a month to make $700? actually maybe okay on a single position if i make 10 like those i have seven thousand dollars and that's not bad but let's say that if i do it in a year it's very discouraging i wouldn't want to wait a year to make seven hundred dollar on a position okay so i need to choose the time frame that seems reasonable to me as and as an addition i also need to know which candles we're analyzing if i'll be analyzing minutes when i'm planning to hold this position for a week now or a month I'm in a problem because I have many many minutes in a month or or so okay so it needs to be the same as the signals validity to what I want so let's make it a week right and we are watching here at at least one two three four weeks ago that it was on this price four weeks ago so I can say okay this seems to me Let's put down this seems to me like a long time to wait statistically until it goes back to this price okay and i can also confirm it and know the approximate tendency for a week to move per week now one of the things that i can do is i can just look at the previous candle and say okay it moved from just a second it moved from approximately here all the way up all the way down and what we're going to do is we're going to just put down the numbers on it as you can see it appears here on the left left and side left upper corner here in the rectangle you see what i'm pointing on it let me just show you we are referring to to this guy over here yeah okay we're going to point on it and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put here what is written open high low and close and we're simply gonna put down the numbers open will be 573 high will be a 589 low will be 555 and close will be 558. now what i'm going to do is i'm going to subtract the open by open minus close and high minus low and then i have the length in between okay so that's gonna be that's gonna be 573 minus 558 which brings us to okay and in here high minus low 
just to explain to you guys the idea behind what I did. Okay. This candle is made out of two segments. We have the beginning and the end, and we have the fluctuations in between. Okay. Now, as you can see, this candle is red only because it's ended in a lower price, right? But it went all the way up here. It went all the way. Just a second, I wanna show you that. It went all the way up here, went down again, and closed a little lower. If you don't believe me, I'm just gonna show you it in days. How did I even know that? How did I even know? that this is what happened? Well, the answer is simple, because the shape of how this candle is looked like. Okay, never mind for now. Never mind for now. Okay, the point here is if I analyze what happened last week, I can go and say, okay, it moved 15, it moved 33, maybe something in the middle. We're gonna put here moments, right? something in the middle i will go for 20 right but the problem is that this is just a single candle can i rely on a single candle is one candle is really a trend can i call one candle a formation maybe maybe i but i can also uh, add another layer of analysis which is called average true range so we're going to click here on the fx indicators we're going to put here where it says type to filter ave and it goes for average to rule range. I'm gonna click and drag it to the right. Okay, so we have here the length, the wielders, and the ATR line, which in this case is just one. And I can play with the length, how many candles it's gonna grasp, because I can't rely on one. I need a bunch to create an average, right? And then I'm gonna click submit. Now it's showing me that the actual movement for wheat is actually 34. It's showing me, Danny, from here, backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All those candles accumulated into the ATR, and the, the figure is 34. Okay, however, however, is it, sure to move 34 dollars in a week guys is there any assurance that wheat is going to move exactly 34 dollars to the same direction in a week or things can happen differently what do you think Mauza, you said no. Okay, so you don't think it will happen exactly this way. I can tell you guys that the market is full of surprises. Sometimes we expect something to happen one way and it doesn't exactly happen the same way. So in other words, if I'll put my line on 34 is somewhere here, isn't it? Let me just do it with the calculator. Okay, we're gonna do 544 plus 34. Hypothetically, let's say that this is a bio, sorry. This should have been here. Yeah, and okay. So if it gets to here, we're gonna make $34. Let's see, 578. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. But the problem is that we wanna make seven, uh, 700. And another problem, if I put it here, right? If I put it here, my take profit, you guys can see that it can get to it and turn around. There is no assurance it will go all the, all the way up. It can go up and then a little lower, right? So how can I somehow protect myself and be cautious? Saying, okay, I don't wanna aim for 34, maybe a little lower in advance, in advance. I do it in advance and I say, instead of 34, I'm gonna go for 20. Okay, so I'm gonna make the movement 20. Why? Because the ATR is embedded in the system. It's analyzed based on the 10 uh, candles. It doesn't have any wisdom. 
They say if it's going to fluctuate exactly 34 or maybe 30 or maybe 20 or 25. So I can say 20 is a cautious step and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take the ATR to its full extent. Okay, I can do that and I call it potential average movement. Potential Okay, and the way that this works is simply say, okay, the ATR is X, I'm gonna take some of it, not all of it, okay? Now, the last ingredient units, this is the necessary amount for us to, uh, to acquire to get to 700. And that's, let's look at the difference here, 563. I'm gonna put down an equation that will be helpful. So we say summary and put Parenthesis, we're going to put here, this is the goal, divided by movements equals units. Therefore, 700 divided by 20 is how much, guys? Surprise me. Let's see who is fast. How much is 700 divided by 20? I'm going to give you three seconds. Who's going to be right? Tim, very good. Who else? Chan, very good. Who else wrote 35? Let's do it together. 35, perfect. Perfect, let's put down 35 and let's put it to the test. Right, so we said if it goes from here to here and we have one unit, we're gonna make 20 because between here and here, there is $20 difference, right? And we said in the beginning that for every dollar, for every unit, we're gonna make or lose a dollar. Therefore, for 35, we should receive, oh, that's, oh, we have to lift it up a bit. And this one should be a little higher. No. Did our line just disappeared on us? Okay, no problem. We'll put another one. Okay, now, is this part understood for everybody? Uh, Steven, no, unfortunately, you have to apply it. And as I said, you can adjust it in a way that makes sense to you. Um, as I was asking, guys, is this understood? This part, is it understood? Do we have any queries, any questions about that part? Because this part is quite important for strong foundations. Any any questions? To the take profit and the stop loss. This is this is the this is how I did it. This is how I put the the take profit on uh, Tim. I measured I measured what can be the approximate movement and according to the ATR I, I saw the length. This is how I decided it to place it. Oh okay, if I'm using it for the stop loss as well. Uh could be, could be. Let's see, let's see, let's proceed. But I, I'm sorry, I thought you asked how I uh, use it for the take profit. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's see if we can also use it for the stop loss. Just a second. So we're gonna put your 35. There is a question here, is ATR reliable for a weekly time frame because of the fundamental news? Of course you have to, uh, Mauza, that's an excellent question. And the answer is the uh, the ATR is, is um, t uh, technical. It's technical, and this is why I said it doesn't have the wisdom to understand if what it's analyzed, it's going to change or not. It's just giving you the, the statistics. So, of course, you have to be prepared. And if, for instance, I know that right now there is a sort, shortage with wheat, and uh, I don't know, something fundamental, I have a more reason to believe that I should buy, right? That the men's goes goes low, uh, if the supply goes low, so that means that demand can be high, right? Nobody knows that. 
Uh, Bian, is the webinar recorded? Yes, absolutely, Bian. You can visit our YouTube channel and you will see. So if I know that right now is, it, is time for harvest, right, and there is plenty of wheat and there is no disaster and the transport works fine and everything goes fine and the demand goes slowly weaken, uh, weaker and weaker, I, I can understand that it might fly, uh, flinch down and even break the support and go even lower. If I don't have that and I rely on those two points, which we already said, we can call them resistance, uh, we can call them, sorry, support, then I say, okay, here it couldn't break it, here it couldn't break it, maybe now it will break it. Maybe now it won't break it again, right? Okay, now the stop loss, how do we use the ATR to put the stop loss as well? Well, the ATR can indicate the approximate movement and that's fine, but the stop loss, the way that I'm putting it is actually compared to the balance on my account. And when the balance of my account is $10,000, so that means that $700 will be 7%. So if I'm gonna choose the same length, what will happen is, let's see, we're gonna go for 20 down, 20 down is 522, okay. And then I can lose potentially, let's see, uh, please can I deposit $50 to my Evitrade account? I guess so, I guess so. I, I and this is not something that, uh, try, try Abdul, I, why wouldn't you? Okay, so as you can see here, 522 is actually what I choose based on the ATR. Now I don't know if it's good or not, I'll explain to you the reason. Because if I go for this, that means that our potential loss is the same as our potential gain. And I'm not sure that I'm lacking it. And the reason is because, because 10,000 divided uh, minus 700 equals, which means 7% exposure, right? Is that understood? It's really, really simple, guys. You can compare. Oh, sorry. You can compare your balance with the uh, with the potential loss, and you can see how much you can lose. And according to that, you can customize your uh, stop loss, and you can decide what can be the load size and the stop loss on your uh, position. Okay. So in this case, what do you think about seven percent exposure? Is that okay? is 7% on a single position is an acceptable exposure. What do you think, guys? Give me your opinion. Okay, way too high. Mm-hmm. So we have Richard here, suggest 2%, Philip. Philip actually approves it. Who else thinks that this is okay? So let's suppose we don't like the 7%, we would like to make it uh, two or something, or three and a half, so it will be easier for us. Okay, watch what happens when I decrease the length between my entry. Let's suppose that this is my entry, right? It's a bit difficult to see, so I'd rather switch to here and then it will be easier. And we're gonna put it 522, right? Somewhere here, maybe weekly. No, we can't see it. And that's fine. So let's suppose that we're gonna reduce it by half and we're gonna make it 532. Now we're down by half and as more, the more I'll change it, now I'm not telling you guys if it's wise or not because you don't want to you, you don't want to put the stop loss too close to the entry. Okay? You can do it, but can you think of a reason why not to do it? Well, the reason I might be careful not to do it is because if I'm doing it, that means that it can be triggered and then it can go to where I want it if the stop loss is too close. Okay? So to make it 2% as an example, 
I can put it on 539, but that's only $5 away. $5 away. And then I can either lose 200 or if it reaches the take profit, I'm going to make 700. Okay? That's how it goes. Now, uh, are, are there any questions, guys? Other and that, and then this turns into 39, and this turns into 200. Yeah. Oh, sorry. This should have been there. We go. So this maybe this is the ratio that I might like more. Now there is no rule to that. Everybody can make their own strategy, and that's fine. Uh, just a second. Can I? This is a technical issue, but isn't it better to wait for a confirmation candle for the market to return? Absolutely, Mauza. Absolutely. Again. The what I'm showing you here is not analysis. It's not analysis. It's purely to uh, utilize the ATR and to compose things correctly. Perhaps if you're looking at this picture, as you can see in here, you had a confirmation candle. Did you have a confirmation candle in here? Not really, right? And then it shoot up. So what can I do? Is as I said, I can have my stop loss just a few dollars away if I want to. If it flinches down and I lose, I lose a small amount, and if it goes up, I gain a big amount. I can do that as part of my strategy. But first, I want to explain to you guys the meaning be behind the uh, value margin impact leverage and spread, so we will know that we actually have the budget to take this position. So let's suppose that the value, as I said in the beginning of the webinar, which is written here, is 544 uh, per unit. Multiply by how many units? 35, which means um, 1900, 1900, 101. That's the value. That is actually 0.35 load size, right? Now, if I'll take the value, oh, sure. First, we have Mr. Leverage. Right, so our leverage in this case is one to ten. That means the plus buying and selling power. You don't have to know it by heart. Even if you point on here, it's showing you it's an option to open a bigger position than your account balance by having your broker multiplying your investment amount. Okay, so that means that we can take the nineteen. 101 and we can divide it by the 10 and then we actually only need 1900 available in our account and then we know that with the situation that we are at when we have no open positions this is enough uh, this is enough and then we can obviously take even five positions similarly i'm not going to tell you if it's good or not but i'm just going to tell you this is how it can be done and this is how much you need to open a position this is okay uh on this explain which price i should enter my buy position so guys i'm going to speak about entry because chen i in the beginning she i i don't know if you're a he or a she but uh, Chen asked in the beginning to speak about entry, and I uh, definitely don't mind. So let's speak about entry just for the next five minutes. We'll understand how we can optimize it. How, uh, who wrote this? Oh, Mr. Mauser, right? So Mauser, you wrote, uh, it might be wiser to wait for a confirmation candle, and I don't blame you. Let's understand what is a confirmation candle, right? So each candle has its own O. Okay, now it worked. You see, guys, when I when I tried to drag it down, it didn't work before, and now look how nice. Okay, maybe I clicked on something that made it uh, this way. Who knows? And now we can finally see what we've placed, which is not bad. Now, as I said before, entering on this kind of position, okay, I can say this has happened twice in period of, let's see when, 
September. So roughly we're speaking about half a year, give or take, right? Mm, and so end of September is maybe less than that. Never mind, never mind. Look, the idea here is if I would want to enter this position, and I understand that last time that it's been the slow, when was that? Before COVID, I guess, right? Let's go months. Yeah. I don't know exactly when COVID uh, started, but I think it was somewhere here. And then it rose according to the transportation is issues that were around the world. So I understand. If I'm analyzing now weeks, and I understand, okay, right now it's in a point that the last time that it's been this low was when uh, we had something, a very big fundamental occurrence. I should be very careful with that because if I don't put a stop loss here, I understand that the way down, oh, it doesn't, you see, it doesn't let me drag it for some reason. I'm wondering what's, what's changed. Maybe now. Okay, so as I was explaining, in this moment in time, I understand if this would have been this low only, only so long ago, when is the next time that it's going to go lower than that? Who knows, right? But if I take a position here and it goes down and I don't have a stop loss, as I showed the way down, the way down is much lower. Okay, it's much lower. So the way that I design my entry, if I choose to enter now, will have to be very careful, careful with my stop loss. Because if I don't put it, and God forbid it goes beyond this support line all the way down, I can lose a big chunk. God forbid if my position is a little more sizable than that, right? And then I can kiss my account goodbye. All right. What I meant is actually that. No, we're still we're still good with that. Okay, but again, uh, you you understood from what I've explained about the risk money management that the way that we're composing position have direct impact on our account balance. Okay, so I don't want to make any hasty decision, and I'm always looking at the farther point, the farther support and resistance, and according to that, I can design cautiously where I'm entering and how I'm entering. Now I could as well. Take Mauser advice, right? Mauser's uh, suggesting I would wait for confirmation could be good, but also um, with the confirmation, it might already shoot up. So I might, if I'm waiting for confirmation, I can take it here. Maybe I can take it here. And the beauty about using this platform is that I can set a price in advance by clicking on the execute when price hits, and I can say. If I have this confirmation candle that I was looking for at, let's say, 555 for the sake of the discussion, then I want to buy it here and it will work like a pending buy and that it will stay here. And if it gets to this price, it's going to launch a buy. Okay. Maybe it would make more sense to do it here. Because then I can keep my stop loss instead of lower than the resistance line, uh, the, the support line, I can keep it somewhere here. Okay. And then I have a little more length to, to play. Okay. Never mind. It's a bit complex to explain it now. I hope that it makes sense. And guys, unfortunately, our time for today is concluded. So I wish you all a fruitful week. It's been a pleasure. Thank you all for assisting me with such lovely questions and comments. Uh, you are more than welcome to join us tomorrow at the live Q&A and proceed with your questions. And I really hope to give you the attention and the answers to your uh, questions. Okay, then. So you all guys have a good one and best of luck.